Get a hold of your Bibles. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter 4. I mean, uh, Hebrews chapter 4. I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 4. Put a marker right there. And then I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 43. And as you turn there, I just want to give God praise and glory and honor for everything that he's doing and, and the healing power that has rested upon my daughter, Amanda. God, God she's, she's strong, and many of you uh, have been praying for her, and we're so grateful on behalf of me and my wife and Thomas and our whole entire family, and even Amanda. We're so grateful for your prayers for the family of God. And uh, we do have a, a re prayer request if you would pray. Uh, we should be getting some news this week. We'll see. Uh, for many of you know, um, she has to have a bone marrow transplant. And uh, we're believing that if she has to do it, we don't know. There's just some things that are happening. God is, God is moving. That's what we're seeing. We know that for sure, that God is moving. But uh, if she needs the bone marrow transplant, that we find a 100% match. And so we got a call last week, and that they've got six potentials already. Six potentials. They're amazed with that. They actually had 10, and then they're narrowing it down. So they're doing all these testings. It's, it's, it's amazing how God uses these doctors. So uh, we're we're supposed to be hearing something in that, and I want to share that with you so that you can continue to pray and, uh, and, and believe that God will just continue to uh, have his way in orchestrating the healing the way he wants to do it. That's what we said. God, however you want to do it, our lives are totally submitted to you. And so pray, continue. Amanda, she's, she's strong. We went to the doctor yesterday. Amanda's my daughter, for those of you that don't know. Uh, so she went to the doctor yesterday, and then she had to get a blood transfusion. Uh, and, you know, she's just taking it like a champ, you know. She's like, I want to go to the mall and get some shoes first. <laughs> you know. So like we went over there and said, you know, baby, you got you to gotta go get some blood. <laughs> you know. So she went over there, and she got home about midnight last night. And so keep her in prayer, but she, she's strong, and she's fighting. But we know. That's the prayer of the people of God that have been praying her through. That's why I just felt we needed to call some people up here and need to pray. Because if you need somebody to pray for, you got to be in the house of God. Come to the house of God. Submit your request. Lift it up to the Lord and let us pray for you. Let us believe God for you. Let us believe God for miracles and breakthrough and things to come off of our lives. So thank you. Thank you. Well, this morning, I want to give you the title of my message just to help set it up. And I'm only going to be a few minutes, and then we're going to do something real special. So please don't leave right after the service. But the title of my message is that God is at the controls. God is at the controls. Isaiah 43, verse 1, 1 reads like this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. Catch that. Who created you. You, O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Say this with power. Say, I belong to God. Say it with power. Say, I belong to God. Now turn with me over to Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 16 reads like this. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And Lord, I am so grateful to be in your presence I am so grateful, God, that I'm no longer the person I used to be. I'm grateful, God, that you touched and you saved my family, oh God. And that you're healing my daughter and that you're using my children in the ministry, oh God. I'm grateful for a church, a praying church, a church that believes in miracles, a church that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And, Lord, today I just pray and ask that you would minister and encourage us and speak to us today that you are the one that is in complete control of every single one of our lives. There is nothing that is hidden from you, and there is nothing that is undone in your presence. And, Father, this morning, we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. We pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a good shout this morning. Come on, a good hand clap, a good shout. You may be seated. And as you're seated, look to your neighbor and tell them God is in control. I want to share a story with you. There was a little girl whose father was an airplane pilot. As they crossed the Atlantic, a storm came up. And the flight attendant wakened the little girl and told her to fasten her seatbelt because there were in some turbulent weather. The little girl opened her eyes, saw the lightning flashing around the plane, and asked, is daddy at the controls? The flight attendant replied, yes, your father is in the cockpit. And the little girl smiled, closed her eyes, and went back to sleep. We can respond just like this little girl when we let our heavenly father pilot our lives. Give the Lord some praise this morning for that. God wants to be at the controls of our lives. He wants to be at the controls of our lives. And why do we need to let God be at the controls of our lives? I'll tell you why. There are a number of reasons why we need to let God be at the control of our lives. But this morning, I want to bring out just a few points why we need to let God be at the controls of our lives. Because today we walk through trials and today we walk through circumstances and today we walk through life with an uncertainty of what's going to happen in the future. But how many of us know if God's at the controls of our lives, everything will be all right. I'll say it again. If God's at the controls of our lives, everything will be all right. And that's what I want you to get a hold of here this morning. Because I believe that there are some people here this morning. You're getting your life together and God's doing a work within your life. Maybe you've only been saved a little while and you're trying to figure this thing out and try to make things work. Or maybe you've been here a little while and you've been saved a mighty long time, but you're stepping into a new season of life. Well, I want to let you know, regardless of what season you are in, if you let God be at the controls of your life, everything will work out. Everything will be okay. And that's what I want to do here this morning is just to reassure you and let you know God's got everything under control. So here's the reason why we need to let God be at the controls. First thing is this, is that God never gets caught off guard. God never gets caught off off guard regardless of what you're experiencing in life regardless of what you've gone through God never gets caught off guard see when it comes to our life God is never caught off guard he knows everything about us and that's why he can never get caught off guard you know you can never get caught off guard when you know the whole plan and you see the entire picture but many times in life and on this journey we can't see the entire picture but I got news for you God is the God that had created the universe. God is the God that has created all things, and he sees the big picture. So if he knows where you're going to be and where you're going to end up, he will not get caught off guard. Isaiah 49, verse 16, reads like this. It says, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands, and your walls are continually before me. See, sometimes in this world and in this life, we can feel that we are forgotten. That maybe even God sometimes forget about us. But I, I came to let you know that God will never forget about his children. God will never abandon his children. God will never forget about his children. He's inscribed you on the palm of his hand. God assures us that he has not forgotten us. He says that we are inscribed on the palm of his hand. 
The Lord has inscribed us on his hands by the piercings that he took for our sins on the cross. He has inscribed us on the palm of his hand for what he did for you and I on the cross. I don't know about you, but if somebody died for you, I guarantee you this, he won't forget about you. He did the ultimate sacrifice. And because of that, he's almighty God. And we have an assurance today that he will not forget about his children. See, if Jesus died for you, he won't forget about you. Jeremiah 32, verse 17 reads like this. O sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. Nothing is too hard for you. I'll say that again. Nothing is too hard for you. If our Lord went to the cross and his hands were pierced, his feet were pierced, he was stabbed on the side, he died for our sins and then rose again on the third day, then he has almighty power. If he's able to set you free, deliver you, and set a drug addict free, set an alcoholic free, and turn your life around, he is all powerful. He put every star in the heaven. He dropped every sand on the seashore. He's numbered every single one of your hairs. If he understand, if he if he knows all of that and he understands all that, he will not forget about you. And I think sometimes as Christians today, we forget about the power of God. And I believe that God is calling the church back to remember and to live and to operate in the power of God. We need the power of God. I don't know about you. But the world I live in today and the things I go in today, go through today, I need the power of God within my life. See, if God created the heaven and the earth, God has summoned us by our name. Don't you think he knows what's going on in your life? He knows everything. And if God knows everything, that means we don't have to worry about anything. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do anything because the Bible talks about what we should be doing. I believe that we got to do our part and God will do his part. We live by his word and God in return will begin to change and transform us to be the people that he's called us to be. We just have to do what his word says. And that's sometimes the challenge we face today. If his word says to believe. If his word says to change, his word tells us to do these things. Sometimes that's the challenge we face today as people and as Christians. We struggle with what he tells us to do. See, our job is simply to trust what he says. And what does he say? He's given us a manual. He's given us a manual to follow. And if you're going through trials and you need a change, you need a miracle, you need a breakthrough, all you got to do is go to the manual, go to his word, go to his promises, and he'll turn that situation around. But what we have to do is trust what he says. See, Hebrews 4, verse 14 reads this. So then since we have a high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. The high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. For he faced all the same things we do, yet he did not sin. Yet he did not sin. But I love what the scripture says, understands our weaknesses. God understands our weaknesses. God understands our struggles. God understands what we go through. But the question I have for us here this morning is what are we believing? Are we believing his word or are we believing our situation? See, because our situation can tell us some negative things. Our situation can look negative. Our situation can look like it's going down or the, the ship is going down. The situation may look like it's not going to work out. But when you believe and you trust his word that he's going to see you through, then I got news for you, my friend. The all-powerful God is able to change that situation around. He understands our weaknesses. That's why I love the message this morning by Pastor Dave when he says, walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. 
And you know how that faith is cultivated is when we read his word and we begin to get into the promises of God. And when you begin to get into the promises of God, your faith is being stirred. Your faith is being built. Your, your faith is growing. And when you, when you find yourself growing in your faith, then you can walk at a whole nother level. Jeremiah 29, 11, many of you know it. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. See, God wants you to have a future, and he wants you to have hope. But how many of you believe this promise? Come on, how many of you believe this promise that God has a hope and a future for every single one of you? But here's the problem, is that we stop right there. Because if you read verse 12, it reads like this. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. See, we always stop with the hope and the future, but it continues on to tell us what we got to do. See, God never gets caught off guard, but we get caught off guard when we stop seeking God with our whole heart and we stop praying and we stop getting off track of what his word says. See, God never gets off track, but the people get off track. And how do we get off track is when we stop looking to heaven and we start looking to people. Because many times we want the quick fix and we want answers. We want answers. We want things to, to work out right now. But God has given us a process and a plan to live by. See, many of us, we want certain things right at the very moment. If God would begin to show you how powerful your life is going to be, you would, you would, you would be terrified. It would blow your mind. And that's why you got to go through this process to where your faith is being built. But one thing I've learned is that in this process, I've got to continually and constantly be fed and trust his word. See, but many times we get off track. Because we've stopped seeking and we've stopped praying. I don't know about you, but when I'm seeking the Lord and I'm praying, I feel good. Just like what you experienced here in the beginning. What happened? You, you, your, your faith was being stirred. Your faith was being built. And you, and you felt like things were breaking off because you were in the presence of God. You were seeking God. You weren't thinking about lunch. You weren't thinking about anything else. You weren't thinking about your bills. You weren't even thinking about your situation. All that you were thinking about was seeking God and praying. And what happened? The power of God fell upon your life. The Holy Spirit filled you. And all of a sudden, there was a faith inside of you where you started moving and you started believing like never before. And I got news for you. It don't have to end here. It don't have to end here. But you operate that at home tonight. You operate at that home, at your home in the morning. And watch how God begins to stir your faith. Then all of a sudden you begin to get into the promises. Read the scriptures. Pray and seek God. And all of a sudden you begin to see walls come down. Chains be broken up. Mountains being moved within your life. Why? Because you're seeking God and you're praying. Not just with some of your heart, but all of your heart. All of your heart. So the first thing we see is that God never gets caught off guard. The second thing is that God never panics or quits. He ain't like us. See, we panic and even sometimes quit. But we serve a God that don't quit. When he got to the cross, he didn't quit. He went through because he's seen you in mine. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on. God never panics or quits. God never panics or quits because he knows where you are going. He has gone before us and part of the path that we will walk in this life. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 reads like this. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them, your enemy, your trial, your situation. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you and he will neither fail nor abandon you. 
For he, the Lord your God will personally go before you. And he will neither fail you nor abandon you. Because God never panics or quits. You know how we can walk? We can walk victoriously. I don't know about you, but God has parted the path. God has parted the path for me to walk through. So if God has parted for me the path to go through, then I got news for you today. I can walk with my head lifted up. I can walk in joy. I can walk in victory. I know that there may be mountains on each side of me. I know there may be any of me on each side of me. I know there may be trials on each side of me. I know there may be waters on each side of me. But if God has parted the path for me, then we can walk victoriously. We can war victoriously. And we can win victoriously. I need some victorious people to give your God a praise and a shout. We can walk victoriously. We can war victoriously. You mean, you, mean, you mean fight? Oh, yeah. If God is on our side, then who could be against us? You could be in the midst of battle and have a smile on your face. You could be in the midst of even sometimes getting beat down, and you could have, still have a smile on your face because you know who's going to win at the end of the fight. It's Almighty God. He's already paid the price. By his stripes, we're already healed. We can war victoriously, and then we can win victoriously. I don't know about you, but God didn't save me to lose. He saved me to win. You need to shout unto the God of this universe right now. You need to give God some praise. Come on. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him like you're winning. Praise him like you're going to win this battle. Praise him like the way you want to see their victorious life come through this situation. We need to walk victoriously. We need to war victoriously. And because of that, we're going to win victoriously. And I know some of you may say right now, man, my situation don't look like I'm walking in the victory. Trust me, I get it. I know. I understand it. Because in this life, we will experience things that don't look like we, we, we have the victory. But we do it by faith. Everybody say faith. faith. We do it by faith. By faith, we do it. Moses was telling Joshua in Deuteronomy, be strong and courageous. Don't panic. Because the same God was with, the same God that was with me is the same God that's going to be with you. And one thing I've learned, in my situation or situations or in time, if God has done it for my leaders, if God has done it for people around me, then I know I serve the same God, and God will do the exact same thing for me. If God has walked with our leaders victoriously, then I know God will walk with me victoriously. And you need to get a hold of that right now. You are in a church. You are in a church that has gone through breakthrough, that has gone breakthrough. You, have, you are in a church that has walked victoriously regardless of what we've gone through. you got to get a hold of that. That's why we will be excited. And that's why even sometimes in the situations that we go through, we will still shout. We will still worship. We will still give praise because we are a victorious church. Because we know that God is at the controls of our lives. See, if God never quits or panics, then we should have the courage to walk through. And many times we don't understand that because we get away. We get away from the promises. And when we stay close to those promises, then we can walk through. We can walk through. Walk through what? We can walk through any valley. Now, I'm not here saying that I'm the most boldest and strongest guy. In the valley, it's dark. In the valley, it can be scary. And in the valley, you can find yourself alone sometimes. And sometimes you may have to walk through valleys. And you may be in a valley this morning. I got news for you. In the valley, there's always a path. You got to remember who made that path. 
God is the one that parted the path so that you could walk through. God is the one that parted the path so that you could begin to go through. And you're the ones that went through that path before. It's probably your leaders. It's probably a man or a woman of God that has made it through that valley before. All you got to do is stay on the path through the promises of God's word. And if you stay on the path of the promises, you will find yourself beginning to climb up out of that valley. See, many times, Psalms 23 is only used at funerals. But it's actually for us today. Psalms 23 verse 4 says, Yea, though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's what I love. Regardless of what's going on in my life, God is just preparing a a grand finale for my enemies. God is just preparing a, a, a table for this trial so I can give God praise. But then it goes on to say is that you've anointed my head with oil. Your cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 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 I'll say it again. Forever. Ever. Forever. Forever. You can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just don't get off track from the promises of God upon your life. Because it don't matter where you find yourself this morning. God is always with us. Give the Lord some praise. Come on, give him a strong praise. And my third and final point is this, that God assures us that he's at the control of our lives, controls of our lives is this, is that God never abandons his children. God never abandons his children. Even when his children walk out on him. There are some people that walk out on God. Because they've gotten away from the promises of God. But even though people walk out on him, he will never abandon his children. You need to give God some praise this morning for that. What did Isaiah 43 verse 1, it says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you, and I have called you by name, and you are mine. You are mine. We are God's. And that's why, church, it's so important that we never walk out on God. And I know many of you may say, you know, I, I love God. I don't want to walk out on him. And I don't believe there is a person that ever intentionally wants to walk out on God. But what I do believe is that sometimes because of things we go through get so hard and get so tough, we begin to drift. I don't know about you, but the only thing that has ever protected me and kept me safe was the house of God. That's the only thing that has ever kept me safe and protected me and my family is the house of God and being in the presence of God. And that's why regardless of whatever we go through or whatever happens within our life, we need to be assured that God is at at the controls of our life. And whenever we go through something or something happens within our life, we shouldn't run from God, but we should run to God. We shouldn't run away from God, but we should run to God. See, God will never abandon you because he went to the cross and died for you. That's how much he loved us. His life was surrendered and sacrificed for you and I. If that's not love, I don't know what else is. Jesus went to the cross to die for you and I. And if he did that, he went to the cross where he didn't have to go, where he was sinless, then I I could honestly tell you this and believe with all my heart, and many of you know it, that he will not abandon us. And that's why we need to understand that and to get a hold of that. And there were a few things in scripture that I want to give you to assure us that God will not abandon you as we get ready to close the first thing is this one thing to assure us that God will not abandon us is this is that God desires your fellowship he desires your fellowship 
We were created for fellowship. We were created for fellowship. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Say, God is faithful. Say it with power. Say, God is faithful. God is faithful. He's called us to fellowship with him. Can you imagine the relationship you would have with your heavenly father if you would fellowship with Jesus like you do your neighbor? Just a little jab. Because some of you love the fellowship. You love the fellowship. Some of you are waiting for me to finish so you can go in fellowship. You love the fellowship. You love breaking bread. You love having meetings. You love having dinner. You love it. You love hanging out. You love getting up early in the morning. You love hanging out. But can you imagine the relationship you would have if you would fellowship that same amount of time, that same amount of energy, that same amount of enthusiasm? What kind of relationship that you would have with your heavenly father if you fellowship with him like you did with your neighbor? I'll just leave that one there. Second thing God gives us assured that he won't abandon us is that God has promised to never leave you alone or walk or, or for us to walk a road alone. To leave us alone or for us to ever walk a road alone. Look at his faithfulness here in this promise in Hebrews 13 verse 5. It says, God has said, I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. I don't know about you, but that's a promise to me. He will never fail us and he'll never abandon us. Some of you may have been abandoned by people in life. Maybe somebody abandoned you. And sometimes it's hard for us to trust. And sometimes it's hard for us to believe because of that abandonment that we may have had within our life. I don't know who I'm speaking here to today, but maybe in the past you've been abandoned. You've been abandoned. And I want you to know God wants to heal that abandonment. God wants to heal that pain. And God wants to heal that thing that has held you down for so long. God will never abandon you. God will never leave you. And God will never let you walk down a road by yourself. Because we serve a loving God. We serve a graceful God. We serve a God that wants to walk with you through the good times, the bad times, the frustrating times. You name it. God will never abandon you. But sometimes, because we've been abandoned, it could be hard for us to trust. Don't let the abandonment of people or of your past hold you back from the people that love you today. The people that love you today. Everything we do here at Victor Irish Church of San Diego, the Bible talks about raising up disciples and making leaders and That's what God's called us to do. God's called us to reach the foolish things of this world. God has called us to reach people and to love them and to work with them. And that's what we do here. And sometimes it it could be like a wall sometimes that goes up because there's that trust issue there because you've been abandoned. And I know that even sometimes, even, even, even people, as we get close and connect, sometimes we can even feel like they don't really care. But that's a lie of the enemy. That's a lie where the enemy would like to try to come in and tell you that people don't care. Listen, if we did not care, we wouldn't do what we do today. If the church did not care, we wouldn't do what we do today. Because we want to see people make it. We want to see people grow. And we want to see people be everything that God has called them to be. And I'll tell you why. Because somebody reached out to me. And somebody loved me. And somebody put up with me. Regardless of how I was and the hang-ups and the mess-ups that I had within my life. And because of that, I stand here today. A man of God. A pastor. A husband. A father, a leader, because I've learned to allow people to come into my life and help me on this journey. But most of all, our Heavenly Father will never abandon us. He will never abandon you, even if you walk out on Him. He'll never abandon you. And as you begin to get a hold of that this morning, I believe if you could get a hold of this, there could be breakthrough within your life.
There could be walls that could come down. There could be uh, mountains that could be moved within your life because you are now able to trust and believe and stand upon the promises of God and trust God for anything. And believe God for anything. And believe God for victorious living. And believe God for the breakthrough within your life. God will never abandon us. And the third and final thing is this, as Matthew makes his way. Number three is this. That God loves you. And he has not forgotten about you. He loves you and he has not forgotten about you. You may say, well, 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 what does that mean? He loved you before you were ever born. Ephesians 1.4 says this, before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. That's just like a father. Right? It's just like a parent. kid could be the most baddest one in the room. <laughs> but he's the most innocent one. And they'll tell you, I didn't do it. And you just seen him do it. And I know you're going to scold him, you're going to get on him, but in your heart, you're going to be like, oh, he's not that bad. No, he's bad. But do you know that's how our Heavenly Father looks at us? When we make those mistakes, people may say, oh, he's bad. He's blown it. Look at him. He's horrible. But the Heavenly Father says, no, he's not. My, in my eyes, he's not. As I begin to read that scripture, I begin to say, God, how can you think that about me? But when you begin to think about the sacrifice that he gave him for you and I, then he'll believe for the greatest. Because you got to remember, he, he sees the whole part of the process. He sees the whole plan for your life. And he knows that if we live by what he documented for us to live by, then we could be this child of no fault in his eyes. Now, I'm not saying we'll be perfect. But I am saying is that we'll be faithful. And we'll be committed not just to the ministry, but to God. And when we're faithful to God, God is faithful to us. Now we're in a whole nother level. Now we're knowing that he's at the controls of our lives. This is how much God loves us. That he designed us, made us before he made the world. We were his thought. We are his masterpiece. In other words, he's our designer. He knows everything. This week, we talked to some architects. And we're going to be talking to some more architects. And it begins to amaze me how they get this information. And they begin to put it into this drawing. They know the crevices of a building or a structure. They know from, you name it, electrical to ducking to the walls to the flooring. But it goes deeper than that. They know what kind of material. They know how thick. They know what it's made of. They know how it was designed in order to create the structure. And you got to understand and know that God is the architect of our life. And we are the masterpiece that he has made. 
I know you may say, I don't feel like a masterpiece. But if God says that you are a masterpiece, I have formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you before time. I, I, I understand what you will be going through and what you're going to experience. God is the designer of our lives. And if God is the designer of our lives, I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty powerful to me. So if God has designed me, God has created me, and I am his masterpiece, then for surely God will see me through what I am going through. We are his masterpiece. God loves you, and he won't forget about you. Final point, and I'm done. That God won't abandon you is that God is not finished with us yet. He's not finished with us yet. Some of you may have been riding around a mighty long time. I got news for you. God ain't finished with you yet. Oh, there's still something in you that God wants to pull out of you. You may have been serving God a mighty long time. God's still got something in your life to do for him. He knows exactly what he's doing. And sometimes we may not understand. Sometimes we go through trials or we go through things and we may feel like God has abandoned us. He hasn't abandoned us. But sometimes these trials we go through are just meant to be a test for us. A test for us. First Peter 1, 7 reads like this. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests as purifies, purifies gold. Through your faith is through your, your, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Our lives reveal the victorious life that you and I live. Trials don't mean we were abandoned. All it means, it is a time for us to show God's faithfulness. For us to show God's faithfulness. So no matter what we go through, God never abandons his children. He adores us. He adores us. And even in the trial of what we go through, God is not finished with us. Many times we may think, God, can you use me? Yes, God can use us. We just got to stand upon his promises. We got to stand upon his word. It don't matter what you're going through. It may look like, man, all hell is breaking loose within your life. Stand this upon his promises. Keep on preaching. Keep on helping people. Keep on serving. Keep on doing what God has called you to do, and you'll find yourself coming out of that valley. But here is the thing is that God gives us the freedom to pilot our lives if we wish. I don't know about you, but I came to let you know today, don't pilot your own life, but let God be the pilot of your life. Let the promises from the word live inside of you. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a good, good praise this morning. So what do we do in the middle of turbulence of life? We go to the throne of grace. We go to the throne of grace. Stand with me this morning as I prepare for you this last scripture. We read part of it, but I want to read it all to you. Hebrews 4, verse 12 through 16. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and barrel, uh, marrow. It exposes 
our innermost thoughts and desires. We don't like that. But we need that. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one whom we are accountable. So then since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. The high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. For he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Now watch this. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. And we will find his grace to help us when we need it the most. When we need it the most. And just like this little girl in the story that we read, when we go through turbulence in life, and we know our Heavenly Father is in the cockpit. We can sit back and rest in his presence. If you're here this morning and you say, you know what? I need God to be at the controls of my life. If that's you, as we sing this song, meet me at this altar one more time. And we're going to pray.